morning, First Love family. It's Devo's time here in the upper room at First Love Church. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 24 today. Sunday, amazing day in church. Really was an amazing day. But early on, uh, before second service, as we were greeting people coming in, someone came in who has been missing for a while. And uh, much like my friend that came a few weeks ago on Wednesday night, who I saw at the NA meeting, um, whose face was just tormented, this person was not in a good way. And they said to me, they said, Pastor Pete, I've been, been messing up bad. And we didn't go into details. I, I, I know what kind of messing up this person indulges in, and... Um, definitely not pleasing to the Lord and definitely not healthy for her heart, her soul, her mind. And, uh, and I, I said, well, what are you going to do? And she said, I don't know. I said, well, how about forsaking all of that stuff and coming back to church and plugging in and being with your family? See, because we can't, if we're truly saved, and this person is truly saved, we can't live in the world and in the Lord at the same time. It doesn't work. And if you're trying to do it, know that it's never going to work. It never could work. It's not meant to work. And it is an exercise in failure and uh, uh, it's just not a good thing to be trying to do. You can't love the world and love the Lord. You can't love partying, you can't love sex, you can't love all these things and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not possible. The Holy Spirit flees you when you begin to indulge yourself in the desires of the flesh. It's just how it is and it can't be any other way. And until you finally give up and abandon yourself to Christ and abandon yourself to the governance of the Holy Spirit, um, you're going to be in that place where there's creases on your forehead from worry and concern and guilt and shame when there should be joy. And when we finally make a decision to commit ourselves to the Lord and we really do it, we really do it, then there, there. There is joy. The Lord is just waiting to pour out on you rivers of living water. Uh, how, what can come from living water except for goodness and truth? What can come from living water except for satisfaction and uh, the, uh, the obliteration of guilt and shame and, and, and all of those things that we suffer from as Christians when we're trying to wade into the pool of the devil? So looking at Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, it says here, clearly no one can, this is Jesus talking, no one can serve two masters, for he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money, but basically what it's saying is just the things of the world period. Um... And he goes on and he says, Therefore I, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? It seems like a sort of departure from the topic. It seems like a sort of departure from the uh, being in the world and, and trying to be in the Lord at the same time. But it's really not. Because our concern for worldly things takes on just the basic sustenance of life. Or if we continue to play in that playground of the world, of the drugs, the alcohol, the, the sexual immorality, the promiscuity, the impurity... If we continue to play in that world, it eventually does lead down to just our health. Our health and our welfare and our very life. 
How many people have we lost to fentanyl? How many people have we lost to death of drugs? How many people have, have, have suffered at the hand of the enemy as a result of, of swimming in that pool of debauchery? So many. So many. How many people died yesterday? How many people died this morning in motel rooms, the Sandpiper, the Alibaba, the, uh, you know, how many? The Harbor Bay, Motel 6. They're littered, absolutely filled with people who have no hope, nowhere to go, nothing going on in their life, and all they have to do is come here, receive the Lord. All you have to do if you're listening to this by accident this morning and you're in one of those places, all you have to do is come here and quit. We'll help you. We'll help you get them to detox. We'll help you get well. And then we'll carry you. The Lord will carry you. The Lord will bring you to a place of peace. Don't you know that He's called us to peace? God has called you to peace. He, he created you for peace. He created you for a relationship with Him. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. When you're out there in the world and you're in that motel and you're doing those drugs and you're, and you're giving away your body and, and, and all those, don't you despise Christians? You don't want to see any Christians, do you? No, you go into the 7-Eleven and there's somebody from church and you like skedaddle out of there quick before they have a chance to talk to you. Because why? Because you're ashamed? Because you resent the fact that they're able to do what you don't seem to be able to do and the only reason that you can't do it is because you're not willing? God is the helper. And He will help anyone who asks for help. So when you say, I can't do it, it's not true. You can do it. But you need us. You need First Love Church, or a church like First Love Church. I don't know how many there are. You need us. You need the Lord. You need the Holy Spirit. But what you don't need is a forehead full of lines of worry and remorse and shame. God created your face to show joy. Really, He did. He created your face, no matter how far down the scale you have gone you will see how you can be benefited by Jesus Christ. And then you will see how your experience can benefit others. And when you're helping others, man, there's a high for you. That's a good high, the best high. Sunday after church, we were all dang high. We were high. Because we helped each other, we prayed together, we loved on each other. It was, it was magnificent. Get your stinky butt over here. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, those of you out there who don't know how much He loves you, hear Him now. Lord, speak into the hearts of these people. Speak into the lives of these people that just can't seem to find their way to truth and righteousness. Anybody that's in earshot of this message, I pray that you touch them right now. I pray that you give them a hope, a taste of your promise, that you call them to yourself, Lord God, that you pull them up into your lap, place your, your hand on their head and pull their head to your chest, Lord God, that they might hear your heartbeat and understand that you are for them and that if you are for them, nothing formed against them can prosper. Thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. I was a dead man walking until you left this dead man walking back to life. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.